there guys, my name is Nick Pittman and I'm the Chief Meteorologist for a TV station in New Jersey called SNJ Today. I went to high school with your teacher, Miss Ogle, and she asked me to talk to you a little bit about thunderstorms and their development. Let's look at this out in Illinois. You see, this is the approach of what we call a severe thunderstorm. We're going to get there in just a minute, but I know what you're thinking. How do thunderstorms form? It's basically a difference of atmospheric gradient temperatures, all right? When you have cold and hot, they don't like each other, so they start swirling around and then rising into the atmosphere, and that's what we call convection. That creates clouds. The further that warm air rises in the atmosphere, the more it will condense, condensate, and eventually precipitate in the form of some rain. So this is an early stage in the cumulus stage. Uh, cumulus clouds billow up, and then again, as we get that convection to last for a couple hours, the cloud begins to build high 10, 15,000 feet into the air, and then that precipitation starts to fall. But there's an issue here. Sometimes storms can grow very rapidly over a short amount of time and become 45 or 50,000 feet tall. That's above where jumbo jets usually fly, the typical airplanes that you see overhead. And you get supercell thunderstorms. I also have a graphic depicting that in just a moment. And eventually the thunderstorm will exhaust itself. It'll run out of energy. You run out of updrafts and downdrafts and you see the dissipating stage as it rains itself out. So the heavy rain comes in the mature stage, the thunderstorm development, and then eventually it's all bye-bye from there, and that's what you like to see. Now look at this dynamic graphic. I'll back up so you can see what's going on here. This is the development of a severe thunderstorm. Basically, you get these around frontal boundaries where cold meets warm, and you have a lot of cold, dry air aloft. That means in the upper levels of the atmosphere and warm, moist air at the surface. That warm, moist air likes to rise, and sometimes you'll get updrafts into the thunderstorm many different directions and then they begin to rotate in a column of air through the thunderstorm cloud which is our does anybody know all right i'll wait for it huh cumulonimbus cloud that's right whoever got that great job cumulonimbus clouds look like that classic anvil shape and the more rotation we can get that is the formation of a supercell thunderstorm which can ultimately lead to the formation of tornadoes. Now in our region we don't really have to worry about them too often but every now and then a storm is severe enough to create that. And you can see that in this graphic here that column of air that is swirling about that anvil on the back end and typically the thunderstorm will move in this general direction. Heavy rain out ahead of a tornado and that's what makes it so dangerous as the tornadoes are often obscured by the heavy rain out ahead of it. You'll also get what we call a gust front. That's a rapid downdraft in front of the storm. So that's why you can be standing there on a day with clear skies and eventually they begin to cloud over. You'll hear the thunder and then whoosh, a giant flow of air. That is out ahead of the thunderstorm. And then you know things are about to get a little bit serious. So let's recap. You need three things to form a thunderstorm, a source, a, source, a source of moisture. You also need unstable atmosphere and a mechanism to trigger the storm. So lift, instability, and moisture. Remember this acronym LIM. Lift, instability, and moisture. Lift is that convection with the warm air rising into the atmosphere, creating the conditions needed for thunderstorms. Instability is directly related to lift, once that air is up in the atmosphere and it condenses, the atmosphere kind of doesn't like that, doesn't know what to do with the air, and it creates the clouds and eventually that turbulent weather. And then, of course, the moisture out over the ocean is typically good for tropical systems, which is just basically a cluster of thunderstorms. But you can also have lakes and other sources of water. And if you don't have that, any flow of air from the south out over the Gulf of Mexico can get carried onto the land. And eventually, yes, that will create the formation of thunderstorms. So limb, lift instability, and moisture. 